Out of 60 students, they give us a list of information. 32 play rugby, 29 play soccer, 15 play tennis, 11 play rugby and soccer, 9 play soccer and tennis, 8 play rugby and tennis, 5 play all three. Wow, that's a lot of information they give us, but if I draw my Venn diagram for part A, this information is going to be so much more simple. So let's have a look. Let's just get rid of all that information by putting that into our Venn diagram. So again, this time we have three circles because as you can see, we have three different options we can pick. Rugby, soccer or tennis. It's going to be rugby, soccer and tennis. Three different ways or sports in this case. There's lots of over overlapping parts. This middle part where all three overlap is the number of players who play all three sports. Pretty obvious, yeah? But I'll just explain it just so you don't get confused. This part here is the number of players who play both soccer and tennis, but not rugby. And similarly here would be the number of players who play rugby and tennis, but not soccer. And here, soccer and rugby, but not tennis. We know that all three is simply five because they tell you five play all three. So you can just directly put that into the middle there. Okay, because they give it to us in the question. So we know that five play all three. Now to get rugby and soccer, rugby and soccer, which is this whole football looking shape here, it's gonna be 11. But we know that five play rugby, soccer and tennis. So to find the number of people who play just soccer and rugby would be the 11 minus that overlapping part of five, which is six. So you put that six into there. Okay, so six is the number of people who play just soccer and rugby, but not tennis. Now soccer and tennis, there's nine. This whole football looking shape is for people who play soccer and tennis. But we know that five of the people who play soccer and tennis also play rugby. So to find the number of people who just play soccer and tennis would be the nine players minus that five, which is four. So you put the four in there. I think you can try the rest, guys. Try the rest if you can. Just pause for a moment and try the rest by yourself and check. Or if you like, you can follow along with me. I'm gonna find the number of people who play rugby and tennis only. So this little region here. And we know that this big football looking shape is eight. And we know five play all three sports. Five is the overlapping. So to find just the people who play rugby and tennis, we simply minus the five from eight, like we did for all the other ones. So it's gonna be three. So that one is three. And now let's fill in the big one. So this, this, and this is all we're left to fill out. So it just takes a little bit longer than the Venn diagrams with two circles. To find the people who play rugby, this whole circle is the people who play rugby. But we know that six play soccer and rugby, five play soccer, rugby, and tennis, three play rugby and tennis. So all these players here, they play rugby, but they play other sports as well. So to find the number of people who just play rugby, we'll simply do 32 minus the six, five, and three. And then the remaining would be 18. So that part there is 18. And then for soccer, we do the same thing. 29 is, the, is talking about the whole circle. So to just get that part, we simply subtract six, five, and four. And then we get 15. So that little part is, that's 14 for soccer. To get the last one, tennis, we we'll do 15 minus the 4, 5 and 3, which will get you 3. So that one there should just be 3. But make sure you add them all up and check if it adds up to 60. Because there's 60 students, um, players, sorry, or sorry, students all together. But I think that does not add up to 60. And the reason for that is because some people don't play any sports. Okay, some people don't like sports, they don't play any of those three sports. So you add all of these components up and subtract it from 60. So I'm, I'm subtracting all of those components from 60 and you should get seven. So we know that seven, play none. So put it outside of the circle. Okay, so you can't include any, just put it outside some random space. And that's it, so seven people don't play any sports. Just remember that. Now B, 
find the probability that a randomly chosen student plays only one sport, which means they only play soccer or they only play tennis or they only play rugby, but not both or not three, just only one sport. So it could be just soccer or tennis or rugby. So we know that the probability of soccer is 14 out of 60. Tennis is 3 out of 60 and rugby is 18 out of 60. And if it's this or this or this with probability, we know that we simply add. I'm going to add the 18, 14 and 3 and it's all going to be out of 60 because I have the same denominator. So I put it like that. So I hope you realise why I'm adding. And that should be 35 on 60, which is simple 5 to 7 on 12. C. Find the probability that a randomly chosen student plays exactly two sports just two sports, not three, not one, exactly two. So it's indicated by these numbers here. Because this is the number of people who play just soccer and tennis. This is just rugby and tennis. This is just soccer and rugby. So we're talking about those specific numbers. So four out of 60 plus three out of 60 plus six out of 60. And you know why we're adding right? Because in probability, all means plus. So I'm simply going to do the same thing as the previous question, but with these numbers. So we add them up, and we know I'm just going to put over 60 because they have the same denominator. And you should get 13 over 60. D. Find the probability that a randomly chosen student plays at least two sports. Okay, at least two sports means they could play two sports or three sports, but not just one sport or no sports. So they want to play at least two sports. Playing at least two sports is all of this and five, okay, because five play all sports. So we add six plus four plus three and the five, out of the, and they're all out of 60, aren't they? So we just add them again because it's this, it's this, or this, or this, or this. So it's all gonna be out of 60. And you just add them up and simplify and you should get three out of 10 as your final probability. Okay, does that make sense, guys? So see how we're adding because it's all. Okay, and make sure you understand what at least means. So this question, you're gonna be extra careful. Okay, but with Venn diagrams, I strongly, strongly advise you to take much more effort on drawing the actual diagrams and answering the questions. Because if you get any of those components of those Venn diagrams wrong, the answers will just be all wrong as well. Okay, so take extra consideration when you're drawing the Venn diagram. Don't make little mistakes, okay? So be extra careful.